So before we head to the panel discussion, our last presentation for the day will be shared by Solopa Europe's policy advisor, Jan Ozenberg. Jan is here to talk about the policy drivers for CNI in Europe. Welcome, Jan, and please share your presentation. Hello, Anu. Uh, thanks a lot for having me today and um, very much looking forward to discussing with you. Um, let me check if uh, you can see my presentation. Could you give me brief feedback if everything works? Yeah, all good. Okay. Um, welcome everyone to this uh, to this webinar and to this presentation um, on policy drivers for CNI in, in Europe. Um, we see the CNI landscape uh, changing quite a lot with businesses opting for more innovative models such as flexibility models, but also energy sharing to actually maximize um, the potential um, that um, of the of the rooftop space going beyond the pure self consumption um, case. In the in the next 10 15 minutes i'm going to present a brief overview on, on the rooftop market development different roads to market for rooftop solar. Um, uh, a new change with the integration uh, with construction policies and lastly some um, policies on financing for CNI solar. So let's jump into the market development. Um, Really, we see that uh, rooftop solar is contributing heavily to the targets of, of Repower EU, the targets that drive uh, renewable deployment in Europe. Um, at the end of 2027, we had 170 gigawatt installed, and we expect this to double uh, to 340 gigawatt in 2027. Rooftop PV is taking 66% of this market share, so two thirds, with the CNI market taking uh, the slight majority of this, of this share. With 2022 and 2023 increasingly strong, we expect growth to uh, gradually gradually face down a little bit uh, to 10, 10 to 30, 10 to 20, 10 to, 10 to 30 percent yearly. Um, but really, a lot more is possible. Um, the total EU rooftop solar potential is estimated to be above one gigawatt um, when you use all the all the technical uh, and economically feasible rooftops in, in the EU. Now um, that's of course supported by an improving business cost uh, for C business case for CNI solar. Despite uh, really increasing installation costs uh, in, in the past years, um, we are expecting in the long term uh, minus 20, 20, 25 or minus 35 percent uh, in, uh, decrease in the installation cost um, until 2030. Um, now, at the moment, of course, um, interest rates and insurance premia um, are challenging the business case uh, for, for CNI Solar. But at the same time, we also have a drop in, uh, in equipment costs. So here, um, uh, to counter this movement and a similar um, less clear uh, picture is available on, on, on the business case. On the one hand, we still have higher electricity prices for companies uh, that um, uh, facilitate their choice for rooftop solar, but on the other hand, um, really challenges the Electricity from the power grid. So um, here, really, um, yeah, the the challenges, the business case, but then also grid constraints, especially for example in the Netherlands, but also in Spain, uh, which force developers to become more and more creative. Now, when we look at the different uh, roads to market for rooftop solar, um, um, and with this trend of being increasing uh, of of commercial commercial customers incre being increasingly exposed to negative prices and congestion, um, then we also see that uh, uh, members EU member states actually phase out support for C and I installations increasingly. Um, so now we have five countries that still offer either feed-in tariffs or auction-based remuneration, one-sided or two-sided CFDs. Uh, so France, uh, Netherlands, Germany, Poland, um, and Austria. At average market prices or at average uh, market prices. And at the same time, 
support for storage is strong in the residential segment, but not so strong in the CNI segment. So um, developers really face the, the struggle um, of either just optimizing the rooftop space for self-consumption, leaving a large large space of the rooftop actually unequipped, um, or going for more innovative ways to develop solar. Um, and one here is building electrification uh, with um, uh, the acceleration of EV um, of EV deployment, but also with the EU's target to phase out combustion engines. Um, we really have an increase in offtake uh, for electricity, which benefits the self-consumption case. Then, for example, revenues from flexibility, for example, in the Netherlands, uh, where grid operators uh, really find, find ways to, to make the life difficult for, for, for solar, but also for, for country, companies that just want to, to connect to the power grid, that uh, gives the developers uh, time to uh, opportunities to optimize on the flexibility uh, case. And lastly, uh, right to um to sell energy to their neighbors uh, either locally or within the same within the same bidding zone um, via private private agreement instead of uh, having to opt for for the burdensome energy communities uh, what's really the game changer here is that dso's now have to set up the need the metering infrastructure for this F uh, significantly facilitating the process. So uh, what, what is, will be needed now in the future is that uh, developers um, and the cut or the customers um, share their wish to share energy with their DSOs, uh, the sharing coefficients, the installation sizes, uh, the duration, things like this. And then the DSO has to facilitate this and has to integrate it with the residual electricity supply, which is still going to, to going to come from the supplier. And for project developers and for, for solar companies, there is the right for third parties to finance these schemes and to facil facilitate all the administration in this procedure um, to, yeah, to, to give, give the end customer a, a seamless process from beginning to end with just one interlocutor, uh, making the process very, very simple. It is a concept that's already implemented in, in many parts, parts of Europe. So France, uh, Portugal are certainly the front runners. Spain and Belgium also very much, uh, very much participating, uh, all sharing locally, um, but Yen, are you there? Yen, your uh, screen has frozen. We can't hear you. Your screen froze uh, thrice, so we couldn't hear you. Anu, yes. Can you hear me again? Yeah. Now it's loud and clear. Okay. And my screen is not shared, right? Not yet. Okay. Let me change this in just a second. Um, just a second. Um, sharing the screen. So please excuse this inconvenience. So is this where, where I ended as well? Or what, when was the last thing that you saw? No, I think you have to go back. Further? Yes, because here, yeah, here your screen froze. Okay, um, so there's this new right to share electricity, um, which allows companies to not only build solar panels for self for self consumption, but actually to sell the excess to the neighbors um, at prices that are usually above the market prices. So that, of course, um, gives you gives the developer or the the company which is with with the rooftop the incentive to build bigger systems to use the maximum of the rooftop space because you actually get rid of the remaining electricity. Now, with an eye on the, uh, on the time, I'm going to skip uh, this slide showing the, how, where it is implemented and where best practices uh, exist and developers are already using this. 
Um, here is a quick example on, um, on how this is uh, implemented in Portugal in a football stadium uh, where the, the football club actually only uses a, a share of this electricity and the remaining 85% of the produced energy is shared in a, in a, uh, in a radius of four kilometers. Um, and all of this was developed by, by a Portuguese uh, developer, which is called Greenwald, uh, Greenwald Comunidades, uh, taking care of not only the financing, but all the administrative steps. Now, um, the second big policy opportunities, I think uh, you already heard a, a presentation about it this, uh, this morning, is the new EU-wide solar standard uh, via the EPBD, the Energy Performance of Buildings Directive, requiring solar installations on all new public and C&I buildings above 250 square meters from 2027. Um, on all new residential buildings from 2030 and from and all uh, existing CNI buildings um, when they undergo a renovation, a certain renovation, but as well as all public buildings that have to be equipped with solar panels. Um, and in Solar Power Europe, we modeled a bit uh, the impact of this of this uh, of this uh, of this uh, law, um, and what we found is that uh, in the CNI sector, we expect additional additional 92 gigawatts of ins installed capacity by 2030. So um, that's the 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 orange line that you see on the slide here. Uh, we really see from 2027 on a boost in uh, in 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 demand for rooftop uh, rooftop installations in the CNI sector. Um, but then also on public buildings, um, even much stronger with 92 gigawatts uh, and cumulative um, expected capacity by 2030. So this is a huge opportunity for solar companies to focus on 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 this uh, on this options. Also, this is already implemented in in many EU countries where you can have uh, where you can look at uh, at, at how co solar companies are doing this. Um, it has to be noted that uh, it's it's very early in the process here, and um, many many companies are actually um, the, so the it came into force either in 2023 or in 2024. So now we are having first experiences, but not really fully fledged um, fully fledged experiences from there. Now, solar companies can use this by integrating their processes with construction processes. With this new solar standard, uh, solar becomes an indispensable building component. It's really, uh, as you have a smoke detector, you will also have a solar, a solar panel. Um, and um, it, you, you either install the, the solar installation with the design of the building and with the construction of the building in the first place, or with the renovation, which of course unlocks a lot of, um, a lot of um, opportunities to collaborate with the construction industry, uh, leading to lower, lower costs for installers, lower soft costs um, for sales and marketing, but also lowering the construction process by, by smoothly integrating it into the construction process. There will be a much, uh, much more rooftop space available, um, and it will also trigger some discussions around how to finance this policy. So what you should expect is that your local governments or your, your national governments have to think about how to finance this um, and find new ways to, to bring this to the market. So please consider uh, collaborating with construction industry to make use of this opportunity. Now, uh, the very last point that I want to touch upon in this presentation are financing opportunities. Um, here, um, we have a broad overview of uh, public financing support. So the EU and EU countries offer quite some opportunities uh, to finance TNI Sudar. So uh, the most common schemes are grants um, with an overall volume of around 80 billion, uh, but also a lot of loans, um, both dedicated at a little bit different purposes. So uh, grants usually at, um, at, uh, at earlier technologies technologies with viability gaps to cover also risks, but then also, uh, loans covering more higher interest rates um, or collateral requirements um, as a, as a more uh, deep for the more developed uh, technologies. Um, for off-takers and energy companies, there are also financing tools for uh, on loans, equity, and also blended finance. Um, there's, a, there's an overview available um, that uh, I can share with you. And in general, SMEs are uh, and larger companies are among the most um, benefited uh, parties for these schemes. There are also a number of uh, additional opportunities here. Um, so third party investment is, of course, really a booming, a booming trend. Uh, we see a lot of successful implementation. Then guarantee schemes um, very much on the, on the rise to, to um, target the off-taker risk um, of the off-taker um, going bankrupt. 
Um, there are schemes available for bundling installations um, to, to, um, to secure financing for these installations, also um, lowering the risk of the, of the off taker. And then especially for, uh, for energy companies, there are opportunities to finance uh, through bonds. So with this to say, um, all these things are discussed in Solar Power Europe. Um, so please consider joining uh, our, our group uh, to learn more about this process and to be really at the, at the first, uh, first step on this. Thanks a lot for participating. Thank you, Jan. It was a very, very nice uh, presentation. I believe you have to travel. So uh, I guess we'll uh, leave the questions for uh, the, um, the panel. So thank you so much for being there. Thank you.